You are listening to the regular version of Sexy Marriage Radio, smrnation.com. You've turned on Sexy Marriage Radio, where the best sex happens in the marriage bed. Here's your host, Dr. Corey Allen. Well, you're tuning in to Sexy Marriage Radio if you're hearing our voices. Welcome. Right now. Yeah. And we are so glad that you tune in to Sexy Marriage Radio. It feels good to be sitting here chatting. We've had a lot of life going on. Yeah, it, <laughs> it has been. It's absolutely wonderful to be sitting here and talking with you and, and just recording. It's, yeah, it's fabulous. It's, there's there's it been so a, a lot of travel, a lot of family dynamic things going Life. on. Uh, Life is say happening. Thank you to the SMR Nation and those of you that have reached out asking and sending prayers along the way with uh, dealing with aging parents and the season that that is. Yeah. Uh, I've had several in the inbox from you guys. and uh, Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, it's great to feel cared for and supported and known. And yeah. With the SMR Nation, they are an in-tune group of people. Mm-hmm. And we are grateful that you spend the time with us. And so if you're a part of the listening audience, then you are part of the nation. And so we want you to help make this thing go. And the way you do that is you can call us at 214-702-9565. Email us, as has always been the case for almost the 10 years we've been on the air now. Isn't that cool? Feedback at SexyMergeRadio.com. Or jump on our platform, which is my.smrnation.com. And join the conversation, join the dialogue. There is a vibrant community taking place there and conversations that are happening. And we also have, you know, this past June, we did the getaway. Mm -hmm. And it's such a great opportunity because it truly is a getaway. It is. Yeah. Well, this is the earliest we've ever talked about the next upcoming getaway, but... We have breaking Breaking news. news. Breaking news. The 2022 getaway, we were inviting everybody to come join us in Indianapolis, Indiana. Such a cool city. We're going to be in the Westin in downtown Indy, June 23rd through the 25th. And if you're you're smart, which the SMR Nation is, this is different. Because one, it's in a new location. We've always had it in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So now we're going to start mm-hmm. moving it around the country. Mm-hmm. First stop, Indy, June 23 through 25. But the other difference is we got a different format we're going to roll out with this one. Which Do tell. Will be a lot of fun. Because or are you not going to tell? No, no. Surprise. Normally, okay. we have gone from Thursday evening, we get rolling, and we finish Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. So there's plenty of time to check out and then make travel arrangements right. already and plenty of time to get home. So this time we're starting earlier on Thursday. Mm-hmm. We're going to actually get rolling at t- at two thirty. Okay. So you get there by noon, check in, register, you know, check in at the welcome table, and then mm-hmm. we'll be rolling by two thirty with a social event that night. Fun after dinner because lots of people ask for that. That's been a Friday will be as on. a normal we, as we've had. Saturday will be as normal as we've had over the years. Although we will institute the social gathering again on Saturday night of a dance mm-hmm. and just a hangout time. If you want to dance, get out there with us. Come on, everybody can dance. You so can move. Uh, but then that'll be the end official end of the getaway. Mm-hmm. Meaning Sunday morning is yours. Sunday is yours. And we're encouraging couples, if you're planning to come join us next year, stay a while on Sunday. See the city. Don't Mm -hmm. plan to get back right away. Get in later in the day or even stay a couple of days. It's a cool city. We're right there. You can just walk to all kinds of places. They've got great restaurants. Yep. If you fly in, Uber or taxi to the hotel, and you will not need another vehicle. That's right. If you drive in, then the whole world, the whole city is yours, but Mm -hmm. all the downtown area is easily walkable, Mm -hmm. and it's going to be a great time. And so registration's open now, which this is, we've never opened it up this soon. Right. Uh, But at smrnation.com forward slash getaway, you can learn more. You can register, you can reserve your room with us because we've got a different format in the way we're running this one too. Mm-hmm. But uh, the, the early bird discount is happening now and take advantage of it because we want you to join us and come get away with a new format and in a new city. And Pam and I can't wait to see you there. Looking forward to it. 
Well, coming up on today's regular free version of Sexy Marriage Radio is a follow-up email from a conversation we had where we answered a wife that had emailed in. Mm -hmm. So she's got a little bit of a report from that episode and then a quick question. And then another question that's come in on the whole higher desire, lower desire, no desire dynamic that happens. Yeah, no matter how many times we phrase that, um, it, it can be phrased in so many different ways. Well, this time it's being phrased as could it, could when you go to an extreme of no desire, is that actually infidelity? Oh, mm. okay. Yeah, that's And then on the extended provoking. content today, which is deeper, longer, and there are no ads, you can subscribe at smrnation.com forward slash smracademy. This is the thread that's come through several different times via Instagram and then also email and voicemail. I've had some, I had a call straight to my phone on mm-hmm. this content, on this concept of what about consent when it comes to marriage and sex? Where does consent play into all of this? Okay. I have some thoughts. I'm excited to hear them. All that's coming up on today's show. So Pam, this email came in from the wife who had emailed uh, a couple episodes ago where uh, she had really kind of woken up sexually. Mm-hmm. And her and her husband were in a re- are in a really good spot, but there's an undercurrent of resentment and guilt for how long it took to get there. Yeah. Right? She's had trouble forgiving herself. He's had trouble kind of letting it go on how long it took because it's wasted time that we could have, you know, sure. all the coulda, woulda, shouldas sure. that we can do to ourselves. And so her response that she emailed in after that episode says, thanks so much for, thanks so much for your insight into my question about guilt and resentment in marriage. You gave me a lot to think about. I've been seeing a counselor for the last year, and yes, so much of the guilt comes from the many, many times that I said I would do better and address my issues for my husband, but I never did. You definitely saw that clearly. As we agonized for months, I kept saying that my low desire and inability to open up sexually, try new things, felt like a block. I had no real reason for a lower desire. My husband was at his breaking point and asked me if if I was absolutely sure that nothing had ever happened to me as a child. Well, under the surface laid a memory of a sexual abuse. It freed me like nothing ever freed me before when I faced it and dealt with it with my counselor. My husband had the insight to recognize that my experience as a child could have taken me to a place of being hyposexual as a young, or hypersexual as a young person, but for me, it actually did the opposite. That abuse was not the only thing contributing to my lower desire, but it was the right place to start. I read book after book. My husband researched podcasts, and that's how we found you and others. The process of listening together has begun an uncomfortable experience for me, but it got easier as we continued and worked through things. Your topics are so real and something that we did not communicate before. I needed something to help me develop a line of communication about sex. It was so hard for me to talk about it and to feel sexy. We've connected in a new way in our marriage through all of this, and we're in the best place we've been in a long time. We continue to listen, and I think that we will for as long as you're doing them. So thanks for that. I'm interested in your experience with other couples who might have had similar situations where healing prompted guilt and resentment. We're progressing, but these feelings creep in from time to time, and it'd be nice to hear what other people have who have had a similar journey. If you have any other resources you think be might, might be worthwhile, I'd appreciate it. Thanks for all the work that you and all the counselors like you do that help people meet like me and my husband. I hope you continue to shine a light on the dynamics of marriage, sex, sex and the issues men and women face all around it. So I'm so grateful that people are engaged enough to not only ask the questions, but then follow up. Yeah, hearing the response and and getting feedback like that goes so far, right? It really really does, because, you know, my profession is one of those. I see people in really rough spots Mm -hmm. professionally as as a therapist. And when they get to where the pain point's gone and they've got a different way to look at it or different tools that really are helpful... And they're off on their own. I would love to know later on, how is it going? What happened? What, right. You know? Exactly. <laughs> so exactly. it's great. It's great to hear the feedback that comes in to feedback at sexymarriageradio.com, yeah. by the way. But when she, what she's talking about is just this idea of how framing it makes all the difference in the world. Yeah. Being able to have a language or a, a framework to address some of the things, which is what good therapists should be able to mm-hmm. provide. Right. And what our show tries to provide is we think of ourselves as helping frame conversations that couples should be having yeah. and need to have, especially when you're facing real struggles in marriage. But her question of what do we do when these creep in still? 
Right. First, you recognize that's normal because the childhood issues that we have and even the marital issues that we have, they rear, they rear their head again. Yeah. And so what do you do when those creep back in? You acknowledge it as close as you can to real time. Because when we put on that mask, that's what helps kind of bury things. Mm -hmm. And our spouse is oftentimes reading that. And so how do you show the courage to be able to say, hold on, I just had something where I lost it. It was a trigger. It was this memory. It was, I got distracted. So just bring that to the forefront and then recover better together. Yeah. That's what we do. That is the, the healing process in a nutshell. I appreciate her comment about when she talked about when they listen together, she said it's, it's uncomfortable. It's Uh an uncomfortable experience to listen together just to the, to the show. Right. And uh, that's so real. Yep. And I think that there's probably a ton of spouses out there that just don't listen because it is uncomfortable. And maybe that's a, you know, maybe, maybe one spouse can't get the other one to listen because of that, maybe it's setting the stage to say, hey, I know this is going to be uncomfortable, but can we just try it? Can we try an episode or two? Yeah. And and go even a little deeper and more personal, though, because I was having a conversation with uh, I'm, I'm opening up the round to the mastermind right now. OK, so I'm in the process of talking to guys that are interested. And there was a quick conversation I had at the end of one of these conversations with one of the gentlemen interested where he was so grateful and gracious for what we do. Yeah. And he's like, I can't get my wife to listen. And it's really hard to even have these dialogues. It's very uncomfortable for her to start talking about it. Sure. And be willing. To. Sure. And I just kind of, the, the thought just hit me of like, you know what, buddy? That was Pam years ago too. Yeah. And I now mean, she's on the air. Right. I mean, <laughs> right. that's quite a difference. I mean, I had discomfort talking about this. Right. When we were early on in our marriage and we didn't have a framework or a verbiage and it, it became a lot of the I don't knows and just frustrations. And right. So it's just recognizing we all grow and we all get better. And I love the way she pointed out in that email that we picked up on all the time she said she was going to do better. And never took the steps to try to make it happen. Mm -hmm. How often do we do that to ourselves in all kinds of areas? Yeah. Where my best intention relieves a little bit of that pressure and angst in the moment. But deep down, I'm really hurting myself because I'm just not following through with that intention. Right. And we all can do better with that. Yeah. That's our hope. So another email that came in, this one's from a husband. It says, hey, I just listened to your July 28th podcast, which that was the delay tactics podcast that we did that I have a question related mostly to the second question, i.e. the new husband who was looking for a reset after his wife had lost interest in sex and thinking about it though. I think my comment may also relate to a little to the first topic that men are treated differently with sexual issues. So as I've listened to SMR over the years, a situation that comes up repeatedly is when a wife call it the lower desire with you if you want, but it's usually the wife completely loses interest in, interest in sex, and the relationship essentially becomes a sexless marriage. And this often happens when the couple seem to have a normal sexual relationship either before the marriage or at the beginning. Even in your recent pos- podcast, both you and Pam basically just said, yeah, this happens a lot. So my question is, why isn't there a stronger response when a wife or whoever is the lower desire partner totally shuts down the sexual aspect of the marriage? To put a finer point on it, Why don't we call this infidelity? If a husband has an affair, that's universally considered an act of infidelity, and he's rightly vilified. But when a wife refuses sex altogether, how is it that being faithful to her husband, how is that being faithful to her husband in marriage? Why isn't there a greater expectation set? Is this a double standard? To be clear, I'm not talking about imposing sex on anyone, nor would I ignore anyone's genuine trauma or baggage, because that's generally where this discussion can head. If either spouse has these issues, then they need to be dealt with through therapy and healing. They don't need to be concealed until after the wedding. Such problems need to be handled for the sake of both spouses. But I don't see how a spouse is shutting down sexually and refusing to work on the problem is anything short of infidelity. Why don't we just call it that? So he's taken an interesting stance and a little bit of a strong one, which I'm okay with. Okay. In a lot of ways. Fill me in why you're okay with it. Um, 
Okay, because at face value, there's this element of, and this is what we're going to be heading to also from a slightly different angle in the extended content today. Okay. But a marriage is a sexual relationship, right? It's, it's kind of agreed it's upon. Part of, it's part of it, yes. Right, it's, it's, it's the one place, if you have religious and moral and monogamous backing to it, it's the one place where this is happening. Mm-hmm. So when it is not happening and it gets to that point of stake in the ground, I'm not willing to show up and deal with this and I'm okay with you being frustrated about that. That's a breaking of the vow. That's a breaking of the covenant. Right? Yes, I would say that when I <clears throat> take a vow to marry you, that would be part of it. Right? That sex would be part right. of the aspect of me saying I do. Right. So I would expect that. So I'm I, I'm interested in the thought process, but but then I have to get further into the idea of okay, what is infidelity? Because that's the that's the buzzword. That's the real big like oh whoa. Because the reason I'm okay with this and and don't think it's too far off is largely because inevitably, if one person is in a sexless marriage, the the person that's interested in sex that didn't sign up for celibacy signed up for a sexual relationship with their spouse, be it mm-hmm. male or female. Inevitably, the fork in the road is stay or go at some point. If I want that in my life and in my marriage and my partner is refusing, that becomes the gridlock issue of, okay, well, I have a choice here. And those are the hard things to address because that, elicits some interesting reactions to people when they hear that. They're like, yeah, you would divorce over that? Well, they would. There's Everybody comes across an issue where they say at some point, well, if this happens, right. that's going to be the my line in the in our mind. And, you know, nobody knows it till you get there. Right. Um, you get to those what you th- thought was a deal breaker and you still hopefully can... Right, because as he's describing in his question is this idea of these are the things that rear their head later. Because when you're first getting married, you're, everybody's on their best behavior. Or when you're dating, you're on your best behavior, <laughs> right? right? And and then it's some, things change. And some of it can truly be because of uh, issues that have now reared their head and surfaced. Because marriage has a way of doing that, right? It it's does. close quarters, it mirrors a lot of childhood. It, it it deals with a lot of things that can resurface and there's replication of, oh, that's a similar pattern. And now all of a sudden that comes back and, and that makes it to where it shuts things down. It stops, it stalls. That That is a reality of a sexual relationship, right? Because you're not just having sex with that body. You're having the sex with the person that in, it encompasses. Yeah. And there's all kinds of baggage and issues that we all bring into this. Okay. But what if we flip this? Of rather than looking at this from, through the lens of infidelity, what if we look at it through the lens of fidelity? Okay. Right? And so you ask yourself the question of, how am I practicing fidelity in my marriage? Because I think this applies then to both sides of the equation. That's just not the lower desire who's not interested in sex. That's both. Okay, fill me in more on what you're thinking here. So the definition of fidelity, because this is one of those wordsmith things that's really troublesome, Mm -hmm. is the idea of infidelity is the breaking of a vow and a covenant. It's kind of what's the popularized thought of it, right? That's what everybody thinks of when you hear it. Sure, yeah. But, But the definition of the word fidelity is showing up with all of myself, Faithfulness to a person. Yes. Full presence. And loyalty and support. Like, right. I, you know, you're in, in, you go to Merriam Webster. Okay. Right. And that's what it says. Faithfulness to a person, cause or belief, demonstrated by continuing loyalty and support. Okay. And how do you show loyalty and support? 
in a marriage relationship. Right. There's all kinds of ways, <laughs> one of which I'm assuming when most people say I do would be this aspect of the sexual relationship. Right. Right. That I will show up and grow in this part too. Because that's also built into the common vows, right? For better or for worse. The assumption is there will be as little as worse possible because I'm working on it. <laughs> but, but there's always worse. We often can flip that to say, well, you said for better or for worse. So that means you're in. Mm -hmm. This is the worst. You're dealing. You, you get it. You said I do. But what's fascinating to me is how this becomes such a heated thing because as people hear it, we all put our own lens on it our own experience on it, our own, right? And so right. it's like, how dare you have that kind of, you know, but until you walk in those shoes and until you face the dilemma that this, that these kinds of issues that are gridlock issues really require, we don't know what we would do. No. Yeah. Right. Truly. And, and that's why I've always had the hardest time trying to thread the needle on the microphone with this kind of a topic because ultimately it goes down the road of at what point does it become a deal breaker? Whether it be I was cheated on, whether it be there's pornography that they refuse to deal with, whether it be drugs or alcohol, whether it be laziness, whether it be job after job, or whether it be a spouse refusing to have sex and to address that side of their life. Right, because all of those things you would say is a breaking of the loyalty or support to that relationship. <laughs> right. Right. You're doing things that cause harm to this relationship. Right. And at what point are you, are you going to deal with those things? Right. Cause this is what was touched, touched on in the first, uh, first email was the idea of how often, and even the delay tactic episode, how often am I, saying I'm going to do something with maybe I've got the intention of doing it, but my track record is I won't. Right. And that's the stuff we have to face. And that's the stuff that Schnarch refers to as critical mass. Mm -hmm. That's what actually changes the things mm -hmm. is I reach the point in my marriage where I'm able to say, this is the line in the sand. Doesn't mean I'm acting on it right away, but I don't know how long I'm willing to stick around for it. I'm at a, I'm closer to a breaking point. I'm, you know, because we say these things in code a lot of times, right? You need to stop that, please. Versus right. when all of me is at that point of I'm willing to address it and take the consequences and make the choices and deal with the fallout and be labeled the bad guy. And I mean, all of these are the th pressures of why people stay. Yeah. Not even to mention the commitment that we make. Right. <laughs> to to this process. That when I reach that point of, look, this is a self-respecting move for me mm -hmm. to, to see life through. I mean, I, we know people that mm -hmm. have faced this and have stayed or left. I know people professionally and mm -hmm. personally that have, that have had this where it's like, I, no, they, they keep refusing. They keep refusing. They keep refusing, whether it be a depression issue or whatever, that they just refuse to even address it. And it's like, I'm out. And that's inevitably what you have to face. But I think of it in terms of, yes, it is an issue that I think you could label it as infidelity. It's a breaking of the vow. So while that could inevitably lead to that kind of a decision, that could still be several steps down the road. Are you making steps accordingly? Or are you just biding your time to see that's where the fidelity hits the other side of this equation? Are you still showing up and loving well? Right. Are you still pursuing what you're interested in? Are you still leading that aspect of your life and in, in, in instigating or initiating things, even knowing full well you're probably going to get rejected? Are you still earning yourself in that? Because I see that as those are the markers to where they make those bigger decisions so much more of a no-brainer. Right. Because we all face real pressures that can happen in marriage like this on varying degrees. But the ones that really do hit it at this level, that's a really, really tough road. Mm -hmm. And everyone on the outside will give you all kinds of information, what they think, but that's all skewed by the way they think. By their experience, by you name it, that is in, in relationship with somebody totally different than right. your spouse. So you've just got to 
You got to think for yourself on this one. But I just think of it as marriage is always a choice, bottom line. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm choosing to show up with all of me, do I have a spouse that's doing in kind? And if I don't, am I willing to address that elephant in the room as cleanly as I can until it starts to become more clear about what are my real options and what are my real choices? Because I have a lot of different clients I've worked with where this was the issue until they framed it as such to where it's like, okay, I haven't been showing up real well though. I haven't been, and I also haven't been honest on Mm -hmm. my side of like, look, this is a deal breaker. You're losing me in this. And that oftentimes can make it to where there's now an impetus to, well, hold on. I don't want to lose what we got. Maybe I do need a face. Well, that's quite a combo that you talk about there. Because if I haven't been being straightforward with where this really lies with me, number one, but number two, if I haven't been bringing my best self, mm-hmm. right? If, if I'm that's not, a factor. If I've not been someone that's worth having sex with, I've got to pay attention to that too, right? right? Because maybe... I'm part of the problem. I'm part of the infidelity here <laughs> okay. because I'm not bringing for. I've not been loyal in other ways. Right. I've not been supportive in other ways. Right. Right. Um, so it really, it's that whole big picture. A lot of people start listening to this podcast with the intent. We hear this all the time of, I came to figure out how to change my spouse. <laughs> and they realize the real story just behind life in general is what is it about me? Right. And that makes such a positive influence on those around us. What can we do? Right. No. And and I think I love the idea of these are, these can be deal breaker things, but what if we flip it to where, how am I really showing up? Yeah. And how am I bringing me and letting that pressure be cleaner? Yeah. That what has, that's what has the greatest likelihood of eliciting some sort of change for one or both of you. Mm-hmm. So before we transition to the extended content today, Pam, I'm going to, this is what we've done in the past where we can set the stage via the email that prompted the idea. Yeah. Because this is something that's come up several times in Instagram and some of the different things with the Q and A's that I do with Christians who curse sometimes or on at my, at sexy marriage radio on Instagram. I just refuse to touch it because to write about it in a short time frame is diff- incredibly difficult. Can't address everything you need to. Because the, the idea of consent is a real issue. Mm-hmm. Right. It matters. Sure. Yeah. And it matters in marriage. But I, fr- I think this is an email that helps frame it, and then we'll answer it and talk more about the idea in our take, my take, in the, in the rest of the extended content. Okay. Okay. So this is an email from a wife that says, My spouse and I have enjoyed your podcast. We started listening just before we got married several years ago. And many episodes have helped shape our ability to communicate about about sex, which was a great help, especially considering the purity culture we were raised in and the lack of any real sex education. But in response to the episode released on August 4th, I just want to add a thought when it comes that came with some concern. I would venture to say that you have one of the most, if not one of the top most influential sex education platforms among particularly Christian and the last episode 100% should have been started with a, at least an acknowledgement of consent. Rape culture in the church is unfortunately prevalent and problematic and too little is ever done about it. Marriage does not equal lifelong to consent to all consent to all things. Many of the things Many of us think of things like only being okay with missionary position as extreme, ridiculous, unreasonable, etc. But can you understand how someone could have a firm boundary around not wanting to try anal or other less vanilla things? The reality is what we feel safe with is a spectrum. And if a person suddenly breaks our boundary, then they are no longer a safe person in our mind or body. And that can even cause trauma. I understand these gridlock issues are incredibly sticky to navigate. But just like we hopefully are teaching our, chill, our kids bodily autonomy and the importance of consent and safe people, those concepts don't just disappear in marriage. I'm going to confess that I've had one of the most negative reactions to the August 4th episode and wanted to unfollow the podcast on the spot. But I paused and remembered that I've appreciated your work and support your cause, so maybe it was worth reaching out to you to share how some of your listeners may be receiving your presentation of these thoughts. If you don't consider consent in marriage to be foundational, I would just suggest that you be upfront with that. P 
P.S. I do appreciate your work and want to say that I love that Pam is on the show. As the female, I am actually the higher desire, but while you are good at nudging us out of comfort zones, Pam is a saving grace to your show to soften the edges and keep my husband and I listening. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so she brings up several points that I think are worth unpacking. Yeah, definitely. And then we'll, sp- we'll deal with that and more right after the break in the extended content. Well, it feels like this episode <laughs> was one of those that was like, wow, that was hard to get through in some area. Yeah. <laughs> just, I think some of the concepts that are going on in my head as, as we're talking about what we did in the extended content with yeah. the idea of consent, um, what we did with the idea of infidelity. Some of these are just really hot button issues. They are. And there's this avenue in my mind of, I don't want to be flippant about things because there's real pain associated with it. Right. I don't want to be cavalier about these things because there's real, there's real issues to come from them. Mm -hmm. Right. They, they are real and they are, they exist sadly, but how are we just being better to face them more cleanly? Mm-hmm. Is what I'm hoping we can uh, achieve. Exactly. And I'm hoping we, we landed that today. So if we didn't at any point in the episode, whether it's the extended content, which you already said this as we were wrapping that part up, or the rest of the show, let us know. Feedback at sexymarriageradio.com or be bold. Give us your voice, 214 702 9565. So wherever you are, whatever you've been doing, thanks for taking a little bit of time out of your week to spend it with us. And come join us in Indy in June 2022. See you next time.